What's up guys, my name is Tech Number here for Troubleshoot and today I've got a video for you on Valorant. So as you may or may not know, while you're playing the game and spectating other players, you can by default see the crosshairs that they have and if you've noticed that you find one that you'd like, you may be a bit confused with making your own one. Now of course this video is very late, I hadn't got access to this game up until now, however of course I'll still be doing a video on it for those who'd like to see it. So on the main menu, I'll simply head across to the top left and I'll go to settings. Then I'll head across to the crosshair tab at the very top and we get a nice big preview of the crosshair at the top followed by a bunch of settings below it. So of course, finding your own exact settings is going to be up to you. Some of the things that I would recommend is making sure that you have show spectated players crosshairs set to on so you can see who you're watching and at the very bottom I'd recommend having both movement error and firing error off. Basically, the movement error expands the crosshair as you're moving, contracts it when you're standing still and the firing error does the same except while you're holding down the shoot button. So of course we'll run through some of these basic settings here. At the very top we have the color option, self-explanatory. We have the outline option which adds thin black lines to it. If I raise the opacity to 1, you'll see that the black lines appear. The opacity just changes how visible they are. And of course the thickness changes how thick these are. Usually you shouldn't have this on unless you're having difficulty seeing your crosshair. These will make visibility a bit better. But of course you should leave it off. Then center dot adds a small dot to the exact center of your crosshair. We'll go ahead and raise the thickness and you can see it appear there. At 2 it sort of matches my current crosshair but you can make it all the way up to 6 in size. So usually you wouldn't want this too big as you still want to see exactly what you're aiming at but having it here can help you a bit with your aim if you're used to it. And of course the opacity lets you set how transparent it is, one being fully opaque and zero being fully transparent. Then we have fade crosser with firing error which fades out the top crosser line during extended fire, of course you should have this off unless you're used to your crosshair dynamically changing. Then in the next section, inner lines. What exactly are these? Well, these are the lines that appear directly around that center dot that we still have enabled. Line opacity, obviously how opaque it is. Line length, obviously how long the lines are. I wouldn't recommend having this too big and I wouldn't recommend having them too small if you're not used to having a small circular looking crosshair. Having them somewhere around 6 would probably be the best. Inner line thickness shouldn't be too thick because you still need to see what you're aiming at, but it shouldn't be too thin, otherwise you won't see the lines at all. Inner line offset is how far away they are from the center dot. This is all up to you, but of course the further that they are, the more difficult it is to judge where the exact center is. Having these on zero or a little bit spread out is probably good. Then outer lines, what exactly are these? Well, if we make them fully opaque and raise the length as well as the thickness, you'll see that it sort of adds a second crosshair to it. I'll make it nice and thick and I'll set the offset to be bigger than my normal crosshair. So, as you can see, we've basically added four new lines to our crosshair over here and we can adjust them to be however we like, making our crosshair much bigger or anything of that sort. And of course, if you'd like, these can expand and contract as you're moving with the movement error and firing with the firing error. Though of course, having these on can be a bit of a distraction and they can make your crosshair absurdly big. So I would recommend having these off unless you want the extra functionality of moving and firing error down here. And of course, you don't have them on in the inner lines over here as well. Of course, you can also do the inverse where the inner lines move and these outer ones actually don't move and they stay still, though that would be very confusing to see this sort of thing going on. But anyways, that's about it. The crosshair is really up to you and your playstyle. The only way you're going to find out what works for you is by testing it. You can watch as many pro guides and things alike as you'd like, though of course they're not actually going to help you get any better. The only way you can get better is by seeing what you're aiming at and being able to see your crosshair very easily. And that is all up to personal preference. Anyways, that's about it. Once you're done, you can hit close settings and if you've messed it up beyond repair, you can simply click reset crosshair to default and you'll get back to this. But anyways, that's about it. Thank you all for watching. My name has been Technoba here for Troubleshoot. Hopefully you found this video useful. It's a bit late, but hey, I'll see you all next time. Ciao.